Okay, let's take a look at leak code 1402 reducing dishes. Actually, this question has one of the highest acceptance rates out of any of the hard questions on leak code. Um, you know, although I have a lot of words here on the right, um, this is just kind of to help me organize my thoughts because I think that this question, uh, although it's not necessarily the hardest, it's it's definitely not like a in, it's not a data structure type problem. Uh, it's more of a math slash brain teaser type of problem, so uh, you kind of have to just you know play around with the example cases and then try to see if you can come up with some sort of pattern uh, to solve it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I've already re-recorded this several times, so I finally wrote down everything I feel like I need to say, so let's hope this is the, the take that works. All right, <clears throat> so the problem is as follows. We're given an input list of different satisfaction levels for each dish, and our goal is to maximize this total satisfaction. Uh, you know, the way we're finding our satisfaction rating is by multiplying the time that it was cooked at, uh, multiply that with the satisfaction rating that's given here. <clears throat> so if we look at the right, uh, I've labeled the time. So it starts at time one, then time two, then time three, time four, time five. And then, you know, you multiply the corresponding satisfaction rating at that time. So if we were to keep this array the way it is, and we're told that we can prepare the dishes in any order, so we can, you know, manipulate this order, and we can also discard some dishes. So we could, we could eventually, you know, remove some of the bad satisfaction ratings to help us maximize our total satisfaction. But if we don't touch anything for now, let's just look at what we get. Our, our max, our, our total satisfaction rating would be negative 42. That's quite horrendous. So actually for this problem, this example case, we can get, we can maximize it to 14, positive 14. So let's see, how, how do we do that? Uh, let's first sort the array, right? We should realize that uh, if we're allowed to, you know, change the order, then we should we should sort in ascending order and have our highest satisfaction line up with, you know, the largest time. That way, we can multiply these together to uh, maximize our, um, you know, our our max satisfaction. So, if we were to just reorder them in ascending, um, we're still going to get a pretty bad number. I'm not going to actually calculate it. It's a little bit better than negative 42, but it's still not as good as 14. So how did they get 14? They actually deleted two, they removed two dishes here. And uh, now now they calculated this. So 1 times negative 1 plus 2 times 0 plus 3 times 5. That's what gave them 14. <clears throat> so I guess the tricky part is how do we know when do we, when, when we need to remove dishes and how do we determine how many dishes to delete? So one way we could do this is, as we already did, we can sort them first, and then we can just pick them off, pick off the leftmost, you know, the worst satisfaction rating one by one, and uh, just you know re recalculate the um, satisfaction uh, ratings for the rest of the um, numbers to the right. Well, that, that would be pretty inefficient if we had to just recalculate all this stuff every time, right? There must be some way we can uh, model that in some sort of expression, or there must be some way we can save that state um, without having to recalculate it every time. So if we did have to recalculate it every time, that'd be a brute force of O of N squared, but um, there's definitely a better way to do it than, than brute forcing like that. So we can, we need to understand that uh, there's a mathematical relation that we can kind of, uh, you know, it's not as complicated as it seems, but uh, it, it is some, it is a type of math relation that we have to, we have to, you know, recognize or notice as a pattern when we're doing this problem. And it's that when we delete the leftmost element, um, we're essentially just deleting, uh, you know, our, our, our total satisfaction will decrease by whatever the sum of the total array is. Let me say that again. So if our, if our, 
if we have 14 as our total satisfaction and we deleted the negative one, um, then our total satisfaction would go from 14 to, so, so the, the sum of this array was four, right? So it'd be 14 minus four. So it, it, it end up with 10. And is that correct? Let's take a look, right? So one times zero is one, and then two times five is 10. So zero plus 10 is 10, right? So that would equal 10, as I just stated. So, <clears throat> um, you know, how can I prove that uh, every time we remove the leftmost element that we're actually just removing the, the total sum of the array in disguise? Well, let's kind of just dumb it down here and use a simpler example. And um, yeah, so let's just say we have the, the satisfaction ratings of two, three, four. And, you know, they're cooked on, they're cooked at times one, two, and three. So our current sum total of this array is two plus three plus four, which is nine. And then our product total is one times two, one times two plus two times three plus three times four, which is 20. So if we were to remove the first dish, right, essentially what's happening is we're going to be left with this new array, right, of three and four. And three and four get shifted over to the left, right? So instead of instead of the four satisfaction dish being cooked at time three, now it's being cooked at time two. And same with the three. The three satisfaction dish is being it used to be cooked at time two. Now it's cooked at time one, right? So you know, instead of doing three times four and and two times three, we're doing two times four and one times three. So really what we're doing is we're just going to subtract by the, the values here. We're going to subtract by four and we're going to subtract by three. Right? If we also we can look at it like this. Um, you know, decrease the days by one. So um, yeah, so hopefully you can understand that um, when you remove the leftmost element, you're just going to be um, subtracting by the the total sum of the of the array. So once we realize that every time we uh, remove it, the le remove the leftmost dish, that it's really just doing a product total minus the sum total, right? Because if we try to re recalculate this new one, the the product total is equal to one times three plus two times four which is three plus eight is 11, right? So how do we get this 11 value? All we have to do is 20 minus nine to give us 11. So that's how we find the product total. And then we'll just find the sum total, which is seven. And then we'll use seven to help us calculate the next product total. So 11 minus seven is four, right? So if we were to remove the leftmost element, then we're just left with four. And our um, product total for just four is in fact um, just one times four equals four, right? So that's correct. So to get from 11 to four, we just subtracted by the sum total, right? Okay, so anyways, once you recognize that relationship, then what you can do is you can just continue to remove dishes until your sum total is positive, right? So let's, right, because in this case, actually our product total started at the max possible um, satisfaction of 20, and then the max satisfaction just went down and down. We want to maximize the satisfaction, so we want this number, this product total number, to continue increasing. So the only way this product total can increase is if the sum total is actually a negative, right? Because, like I said, to get from one product total to the next product total, we're doing this previous product total minus the sum total and the only way that this will you know increase is if we minus a negative right so when sum total is a negative then you know then we'll be going up we'll be increasing our max satisfaction so as you can see here to get from this product total of negative three to get to the product total of 10, we just did negative three minus 
negative 13. Min negative 3 minus the sum total here. Right? The sum total of this array is negative 13. And so we just did negative 3 minus negative 13, which gives us 10. And then to go from 10, um, you know, our sum total is negative again. So we'll continue to, um, you know, do minus the negative 4, which gives us 14. And then once we're at 14 and we sum up this array and we see that it's actually a positive value for sum total, then, you know, to get to the next product total it'll be 14 minus 4 equals 10 so so once your sum total is in the positives then you know that you've peaked and you can't uh, you can't maximize your product total any further so this would be your best answer at 14 so that's when you stop iterating once you realize that the sum total is greater than 0 and so let's uh, look at this Let's look at another example, example four, and see how they got 35. So, um, you know, we just calculated the sum total, and we found that negative three plus negative two plus negative one plus three plus five, that is a total of two. So since the sum total is already greater than zero, we just break out and return our current product total, which we computed to be 35. So 1 times negative 3 plus 2 times negative 2 plus 3 times negative 1 plus 4 times 0 plus 5 times 3 plus 6 times 5. All right, yeah, because, you know, the sum total is only going to increase at this point if we remove uh, the negatives. So it's, it's, it's not going to get any better, and we're just going to keep uh, removing, decreasing our max satisfaction. So... All right, if you guys didn't understand that, um, hopefully you can, you know, pause the video wherever you didn't understand it. Maybe you could try to read through this um, explanation text slowly. I really tried my best. I think this is the best I'm going to possibly explain it. So um, hopefully, hopefully you can make do with that. And, uh, you know, I'll have the code in the description. The code's only like 10... 10 lines or whatever but uh, try try implementing it yourself first so you can learn you can learn the question on a deeper level and then if you get stuck reference my reference the video reference this text reference the the actual code itself and um, yeah good luck thanks for watching